This is a team prosperity meeting. This happens weekly on Wednesdays. This is for financial advisors, coaches, agents on how to build, um, scale your business, all of the things that you need to know, no matter where you are in the business cycle. If you're just getting started, you're trying to get traction, you're building, you're growing, you're scaling, wherever you're at, we try to give you information each and every week to help you with your business. We are into the middle part of Thanksgiving, our middle part of November. We're coming up to Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, this whole back part of the year. Um, what we always tell you guys is continue to do what you do. Yeah, you're going to have a little off time based on the seasonality of things, but continue to do what you do, keep in the rhythm. And then as we've always said, as people are coming back into 2023, kind of getting their mindset back, restarting. You've already got stuff that's happening. You're springboarding into the year. Makes for a much better start, and it'll make for a much better first quarter, which will set the tone for the entire year. Last week, you guys, we talked about what's your message to the people. If they're struggling with inflation, if they're worried about rising interest rates, if they're concerned about retirement or future taxes, held back by debt, unable to accumulate assets, or just looking for more ways to get ahead, then our message is clear and simple. We can help. So once again, all of these are on the YouTube channel. If you're in the closed Facebook group, you have access to it as well. Um, you know, all of the descriptions here tell you exactly what that particular meeting was about. So this week we are going to get into um, just a list of things that can help you in terms of business tips for success. Remember, success is not a sprint. It's uh, more like a marathon. So you have to you know, hold your vision, you have to trust the process, but along the way, you can do some things that will increase the likelihood of the success. So these are business tips for success. First of all, we have to understand that entrepreneur success, entrepreneurial success is not a straight line. It is a very, very, very messy, um, you know, route and path because a lot of people see you begin a business and then eventually you become successful with the business. They don't see that all that middle part. So what you have to understand is that middle part, we all go through it. And it's, you know, it's not that much fun to go through, but if entrepreneurship was easy, everybody would do it. So you're going to have to sacrifice some stuff on the front side and understand this is a journey um, because the back end rewards and the freedoms that you can attain from this uh, are definitely worth going through this process. You've got to find, so if you're building sales teams and you're building agencies, and you're trying to surround yourself with people that can help you build this out, you know, nationwide distribution of products and services, you have to find people that are eager for success. That is one of the main qualifiers, disqualifiers that I look for when I'm talking to people. Yes, I want to know about their professional background. I want to know about what they've been doing up to this point, but I also want to know going forward, are they hungry for success? If they had success in the past and they're not hungry for success in the future, they can't live off what they've done in the past. We have to have people that understand, you know, it takes grit and it's a key piece of the recipe. It's a key ingredient is the grit. So you want to go out there and identify people that are mission-based, they buy into what you're doing and they're very, very hungry and eager for success. You have to learn how to reach customers in more than one ways. And that's not only on like existing prospects with notifications, reminders, outreach campaigns, things of that nature, but just how are you going to reach your customers? You know, webinars, seminars, you know, uh, online advertisements. There's a bunch of different ways that you can look at this tip, not only in the communication methods, but also where are you finding your clients? And this is very, very important because once you understand your persona, and then where that persona is and how to reach them in multiple ways, you get your message correct, get a percentage of those people raising their hand, and it's off to the races. And you just go back to that well um, because you know these people are in my persona. These people are able and willing to go down the route that I need them to take to get the help they need. So understand what you're trying to do, understand where your customers are, and go back there continuously if it's working. If it's not working, you know, find another place, but don't be one legged. Don't just do the same thing over and over and over again. If you ever watch Shark Tank and somebody's got a successful business, but the only thing they're doing is running Facebook ads, sharks aren't interested because that's something that they don't control. That's something that can be changed. That's something that can basically go stale. And you can't have a one legged stool. You have to have multiple legs for your business so that if something 
is deficient for a period of time or it just plain stops working, you have other avenues. Use a specific approach to time management. The 20-60-20 rule is, is a pretty good rule to follow. So there's two bookends. You've got the 20 and the 20 on each side. That front 20 can be planning, can be preparing. It can be doing the little stuff like you know posting on, on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever it is that you're doing. Those daily tasks um, that aren't income producing activities. On the other side of the 20, that other bookend, that can be strategic reflection, you know, um, learning, um, you know, watching videos about marketing, sales, whatever it is. But in the middle, that 60, that is the meat of your day. And that has to be spent on income producing activities. So six out of every 10 of your minutes that you're spending on your business every day has to absolutely be spent on income producing activities. If you don't have enough time invested into income producing activities, there's not going to be any income. Without any income, there's no real desire to go forward and continue to do this. You've got to dig deep into your numbers. Once you know your numbers and you know what it takes to manufacture a client, you know what your return on investment is, you know what your cost of acquisition of a client is, you know how many telephone calls it takes to create X, whatever it is, you have to know your numbers. And if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. And if you don't know your business, you can't teach anybody else how to do this. So what you have to understand is you have to learn it from an agent perspective and then be able to manufacture that into a management style that can be passed down, kind of pay it forward. Because if you have a, an organization that knows their numbers, and they know how to uh, you know, build and scale and grow their business based on data, then you're going to have a booing, affluent business. However, if you just got a bunch of people doing random activities and they have no idea what those activities actually manufacture, um, your business is not going to go very far. You need to create a business toolbox, just like if I was a carpenter, you know, I have that, I have all my tools, same thing here. You need an online business toolbox. What are you using daily? What is an effective tool? If you've got something that's not an effective tool, you know, get rid of it, chuck it out of your toolbox. But you also want to make sure that you keep up and that you're adding things that can make your business more efficient um, and more lean and mean, so to speak. So once again, the stuff that you're doing right now to help you as a business owner, once you start to have that agency growth and you've got people surrounding you um, that are looking for ways to get this done and you actually have a blueprint for success, um, scalability um, is there because in a lot of our business models, you know, there's no point of resistance for scalability in terms of, you know, you don't need infrastructure, you don't need additional capital. It's a human element. And so part of what you do on that is preparing people for success, preparing people to win. If you get good at that, people will be attracted to you because they know that, that you can help them reach their goals. And by you helping individuals reach their goals, collectively, we're getting to, into organizational goals, team goals, and getting into where we actually want to go, which is you know, the nationwide distribution and what that comes out with in terms of revenue and income and growth for you and your partners. You've got to make strategic partnerships. And that doesn't mean just, you know, pitching, recruiting, selling all the time. That means like showing interest in other people, asking what they do. Networking is one of the best ways that you can possibly build your business because it's non-threatening. You're showing interest in other people. That builds interest in what you do. And the strategic partnerships can come from a lot of different areas. Hey, if I can help you and you can help me, does it make sense to make the partnership? Always be looking how not only that you can help yourself, but you can help other people, other entrepreneurs, other business owners. They are always looking for strategic partnerships that will benefit them. So you have to learn how to talk about, you know, yourself. Yes, at the right point of the conversation, but you have to know how to open conversations on the front side that ask questions and that those questions allow the other side to talk. And we've always talked about this, that information they give you, it uncovers what you need to take the conversation further. You got to build in your downtime and that's, you know, we're coming up on a seasonality or a seasonal part of the year where we have, like we said, Thanksgiving, Christmas and New Year's. When we can't have the direct activity, what is an entrepreneur doing? They're learning. They're looking at new stuff that can help their business. So if it can't be direct activity, you know, do the things that you need to to continue to gain a competitive advantage over, you know, the external competition and the internal competition. 
you know, sales videos, marketing videos, you know, learning about a new tool that could possibly go in your toolbox to help you with your business. All of these things are very, very important. If you just never grow and you never learn anything new, your business is going to suffer. Ask and share. This goes back to the strategic partnerships. You just need to learn how to open conversations. And when you open conversations with non-threatening language, where you're not asking anything on the other side, other than just participate in the conversation, it's very, very easy to network and find opportunities for those type of partnerships. So ask, share, know. You know, these are the things that you know we want to make sure that we incorporate into our conversations. You're asking people, you're sharing information, you're knowing things that you can help you know, them with their particular situation. You've got to develop a strategic plan. A strategic plan means that you understand the different parts of your business. You don't have to take over all those roles, but you need to understand and identify what those roles are and how those all come together. So you need a marketing plan, you need a sales plan, you need a management plan, and overall you need that strategic plan that kind of connects everything together. What am I doing today what am I doing next week? What am I doing next month? It's going to lead me to those goals that I have six months, 12 months, 18, 24 months down the road. Got to check the scoreboard every once in a while, right? So especially in the beginning, you know, I tell you guys to concentrate on activity over cash flow and income. But at a certain point in your business, you definitely want to start understanding the scoreboard, looking at it. And if we're not scoring enough, if we're not making enough money, if we're not getting to those you know, those revenue and income goals that we're looking for, look at ways that you can adjust the game plan. Look at different ways that you can do things maybe a little bit differently and fix some of those, you know, those clogs in the pipeline. Once you identify what's clogging up your pipeline and how to fix that, it's going to run smoothly. And just like a, you know, a garden hose, when it's all, you know, clenched up, the water's not flowing through the other side. You un, you know, unleash that clench and Water's flowing freely. So the scoreboard is important, not in the very, very beginning of your business, but as you build your business, you need to understand, you know, money is the key driver. It's a motivating factor. It's a tool. It can help you build your business. And also, you know, you got bills to pay. So your time that you invest into this business has to get a return. Uh, like I said, not so much in the beginning stages, but at some point we have to have income revenue recognition that has to build, to get us to our goals. One of the best ways that you can build your business in a way that will have a long standing model is to focus heavily on the customer experience. Understand what your prospects go through, what your customers go through, what your clients go through, and try to make that better. You know, if you get addicted and obsessed with the customer experience, you know, that's how a lot of big businesses was built, like Amazon. You know, Amazon was built, you know, just they were obsessed with the customer experience. Same thing here. You know, we are a data-driven technology company, but at the end of the day, you know, we're all human beings. So you have to focus on that customer experience, make it better. And once you do, once again, you can pass that down to agents and that's going to bring a velocity to your business growth. Invest in yourself. That doesn't always mean financial or monetarily. That means invest in yourself with time, energy, resources to make yourself better as an entrepreneur, make your business better, um, you know, build your business and build your assets. Always think ahead. Yeah, you've got to concentrate on today what you need to do, but what does the future look like? And what are you trying to do? Because one of the best ways you're going to attract good, solid agents into your business is have a vision and have people buy into that vision. If you don't know what you're trying to achieve, it's going to be hard to sell that vision to anybody. What are you trying to do? What are we trying to do as an organization and go out there and attract the right people who buy into your vision and once again, like we talked about earlier, that's part of it. The other part is, are they eager for that success? And you've got to focus on social media, guys. We have tools that didn't exist, you know, years ago. So you have to understand, once again, if I nail down my persona and I know who exactly I'm looking for and I know where they are on social media, what they're following, what they're looking at, it's much easier for me to find them, identify them, get in front of them with a message that resonates have them raise their hand. Yes, I want more information. Yes, I would like to talk to you. Social media is great, guys. You, you know, you don't have to be good at all the platforms. You have to pick out a couple of platforms that you're comfortable with, you're okay being on, and then understand, you know, what to do on those platforms that's not going to be pushy. 
Because if you're out there constantly pitching, selling, recruiting, it's going to fall on deaf ears. You need to build, engage, and then sell at the right opportunity. But the build and engagement part is constant. You're always building your audience bigger. You're always engaging that audience, whether it's entertainment, education, personal stuff about yourself. Uh, people are going to buy into you. Remember, on social media, you are the brand. And we talked about this a little bit earlier. You just need to learn how to network. Network is one of the greatest ways to build a business like that we have because the strategic partnerships that you can gain from networking, you know, one of those strategic partnerships can really, you know, blow up your business in terms of growth and revenue and income. So understand, like we talked about earlier, show interest to other people, ask questions, you know, about what they do, how they you know, like it, what's working for them, what's not, you know, is the economy, the way it's turning affected their business. Just have those general questions. People love to talk about themselves. Entrepreneurs love to talk about their business. You just have to get in front of people and talk to them. And once again, when you're doing that, that creates the opportunity for strategic partnerships. You got to research your competitors, whether they're in this industry or out of the industry. You need to look at people, especially online, that are making it happen and that are finding success in what you're trying to do, reaching people, um, getting the engagement that you're looking for. And look at what they're doing. What are they doing? How are they doing it? Uh, and then mimic that. So if somebody's doing something correct, you yeah, want to follow along. You know, if somebody's doing something incorrect, I also want to identify that as a, something not to do. So when you're researching your competitors, you learn what to do as well as what not to do. And the combination of those two things will lead you down the path to where you're trying to get to. Build word of mouth for your business. If you are creating a, an, you know, an exciting and excellent customer experience where people are excited about the education, they're excited about the back end products or services, you're online with your own brand living it, you know, build word of mouth. And that's one of the greatest marketing still today uh, in the time that we live in the digital revolution. Word of mouth is still going to be your best marketing, whether that's online or offline. Get people talking about you and your business. Identify new opportunities every single day. You should be thinking about, like we talked about earlier, the client experience, but also how do I identify new opportunities? Where can I go right now? How can I grow my business? How can I get to those goals and those benchmarks that I set? One of the greatest things as an entrepreneur is, you know, we are always looking for new opportunities. It's our business. So we wear a lot of hats, but at the same time, that creates an opportunity for us to go out there and see things and incorporate that into our business model. And once again, you know, just continuing to tell you guys this, the things that you do now and that you can pass on to you know, generations of agents through a business model that you've created, you know, that's going to help the velocity. Build a list. You're not going to find any business or any entrepreneur that's successful that doesn't constantly build their list. You, know, you want to build a list. You want to get in front of people. You want to offer value-based propositions. But once again, building a list is part of building your audience. And if you're not, if you don't have a list, you know, that's a negative leading indicator. If you do have a list, you should continue to look in, at different ways to add more and more people, not just random people, but actually people that fall into your persona on your list. As the list gets bigger, the outcomes get bigger as well. Diversify your offer lineup. Remember, you can't do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Eventually, it gets stale. So you want to find new ways and new types of language and communication and new online material to get the same type of message across just in a different language, just in different words from the last time. Diversify your lineup. You know, there's several value points to what we do. Identify different ones and get excited about different ones at different times and lead with those. Build passive income streams. Remember, you can only do so much. You know, if you want to go, uh, if if you want to go fast, go alone. You want to go far, you're going to build a team. Building a team allows you to create passive income. It allows you to create overrides. It allows that income to build. And like we talked about earlier, building your business allows you also to continue to build your assets. So the combination of those two things um, puts you in the driver's seat to create financial freedom for yourself. Get organized. One of the biggest things that will hold us back or kill your business, um, you know, is being unorganized because being unorganized means things are falling through the cracks. It also means that you are getting less and less interested in the business. The more disorganized you are, 
the less interest that you're going to have in your business. And eventually you'll just drift and quit. So organization is key. Um, if you're not an, you know, a, a clean person or an organized person, technology helps with that. So if you've got deficiencies, identify the deficiencies and find ways that you can correct those or help yourself get out of your own way. Understand the risk and rewards of what you're doing. So when you're out there, you know, if you're uh, putting something online or you're texting somebody, you're writing an email, make sure that you're okay with that stuff going out and it's not going to come back to haunt you. Same thing with what you're doing on online advertisement. If you're spending money on your business, what is the return on investment? Because if it's non-existent or little to none, then you know you need to find something else. So you always need to understand both in your actions um, and your intentions, what are the risk rewards of what I'm about to do? And does this make sense? Be creative. An entrepreneur really does two things. An entrepreneur solves problems pretty much daily. And an entrepreneur uh, is a creative person that always looks at their business in terms of how do I make it better? How do I make it bigger? You know, all the things that we're looking for. Creativity. Let your mind go wander. You know, what could you do for your business? Stand out. Remember, if you look at like commercials that, you know, were on TV years ago that you still remember, you know, those were creative, those were unique, those were, you know, in a way, marketing genius. So you want to understand, you know, in order to be on somebody's mind, in order to be on the forefront when somebody's making a decision, you have to constantly stay in front of your audience, be creative in what you do. Stay focused. There's a lot of distractions these days. Remember, you can't be good at something if you're doing seven things at one time. You got to stay focused on something. If you believe in what you're doing um, and you've committed to seeing this out, which is commitment to your own success, stay focused. Don't get detract. Uh, don't get distracted. You know, if you're the kind of person where you're working and you know notification and bells and alarms are going off on your cell phone and those are distracting to you. Put it away for a little while. You have to learn how to stay focused because the more focused that you can be, the more intention you bring with the activity that you bring into your business. And that's going to help you meet your targets or objectives. Um, and along the way, it's going to help the measurement as well. You got to prepare to make sacrifices. As an entrepreneur, we give up some of the stuff on the front side in order to have the stuff on the back side that others can't have. So there's a lot of different ways that people make money. You know, we don't trade our time for money. We trade our time for results. Those results are not always, like we talked about earlier, in that straight line. It gets a little bit messy, but the end outcome of what you're trying to do in terms of the rewards and the freedoms, you know, there's a price to pay for everything. So you need to, Grant Cardone says, you know, pay the price today so you can pay any price tomorrow. You've got to make sacrifices as an entrepreneur because if you don't make sacrifices as an entrepreneur, your business and you as an entrepreneur is going to be the sacrifice. And finally, guys, be consistent. You know, you can't start and stop a business. Think about if you were in like a retail location and you had, uh, I don't know, any type of a business and you decided, you know, I'm going to be closed on these days, open on these days, closed on these days. You have to be open enough to have enough income to pay your bills, pay yourself for your time invested in this business. You're trying to pull a rock up a hill. You can't stop. You got to go, 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 go. Be consistent in what you're doing because if you have a lot of activity and then you stop and then you come back and you have a lot of activity and you stop, that start stop motion is like you never really started in the first place. So that's all we've got for this week, guys. We'll continue. I think next week we're not going to have a meeting because it's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So we'll pick up the Wednesday after that. And once again, if you guys are working on your business, we will definitely be there to help you, um, you know, make sure that you're on the right path and along that pathway, make any corrections uh, if something's holding you back.